Hello friends and welcome back for episode 42 of our Terraria 1.3 Let's Play. Hope you're all doing well today as always. Today we're going to try actually preparing for a boss fight for once, am I right? So let's go ahead and look at our inventory. We've got some odd things in here that are maybe a little bit out of the uh, ordinary for today. Number one, we've got some Iker or Iker or Icor or Ecor or Ico or Team Ico or Shadow of the Colossus. We've got that item over here. We're going to also be investing in a little bit of uh, bottle action. Got some pixie dust, which honestly I think I was just meaning to sell, and also these fallen stars, and I've sort of arranged them into a very rudimentary and odd face. Now I've, I've mutated and bent the face into something completely uh, uh, different. So let's go ahead and do the first thing that I want to do, which is to go ahead and fill some of these bottles with water. We're going to need that for an item that I'm about to make soon. Don't be confused, as I was. You can't actually just dip the water bottles into the water like this, as you would expect to, with, you know, the way you can do it with a bucket. You've got to actually craft water into bottles. So if we'll go into our crafting menu here, you can see there it is. We're just going to go ahead and fill each one of those. It doesn't take anything out of the water pit, so, you know, if you find yourself in a position where you want to become, like, a professional alchemist... To make a living, maybe you want to, like, dig a little trench next to your house or in your house or something like that and fill it up with a little bit of water. I'm going to collect our 38 silver as well from the tax man. Looks like an old Hugh Jackman, doesn't he? Yeah. Alright, so we got some water bottles. What are we going to use these water bottles for? The idea is we're going to combine them with this stuff over here and hopefully create a consumable that will help us fight the Duke. So let's see if it is not actually here. Where do I create this consumable? Let's go talk to you about it. What's up, Colin? How's it going, man? Hope you're excited. We're going to use your services. All right, so there it is. Flask of Eker. Eker requires imbuing station. Isn't that the thing I've got over on the right? Does this count as an imbuing station? Evidently not. Which one of these is that? Is it one of these? Oh, I didn't know we can make a weapon rack here. That's kind of cool. And an item frame. I'm going to be looking into all of these things as well. We're also going to be crafting a uh, kettle to create some fish to give us the well-fed buff from. Are none of these an imbuing station? I could have sworn this, this uh, putting this thing on top of that shelf counted as one. Maybe I'm mistaken. What about up here? Do we have any imbuing stations? How do I do this? Nope, none of those count. Alright, uh, so what is an imbuing station? How do we create one? Having that on there doesn't count either? Okay. Uh, what if it's just that I need to put the flask on top of a table, but none of those tables count? So why don't we go grab another one? So I've got extra bottles over in my potion shop over here. Grab that, put it on top of that. And we've got tables galore everywhere, so let's just drop one, like, up on here. Oop, I broke it and... There we go. Sorted. Um, nope, that's not it either. So, we've got the water, we've got the eaker, the eaker, the acor. Okay, imbuing station. See, this is when you get into trouble. Because there's not really, like, an easy way to figure out how to create a certain type of crafting table. I mean, yeah, the guy can tell you what it is, and I guess logically you can start to formulate what that could mean. Why don't we go talk to the wizard? Maybe he knows more. This guy's probably into all sorts of spells, right? Being a wizard. Harp, bell, greeter, yeah, none of these make any freaking sense. All right, I'm going to go find out what the imbuing station is, and I will be right back. Okay, I found out what the imbuing station is. I'm a little surprised that I didn't actually buy it already. Uh, usually I do, but I guess I just sort of forgot this time, so I haven't dealt with uh, this character as much as maybe I normally do. This guy over here, our jungle guy, he's got one for seven gold, so we're going to grab it, we're going to pop it in here, and we're going to drop it like it's hot, right where it belongs, on the floor over in this area. So, that will be that, and then we'll be able to craft a variety of potions, I suppose. So, flasks, let's make these. We've got 19 of them now. That should last us uh, for more than enough time. I don't really need that many, to be honest. But let's also get rid of some of the other junk. Five gold from all of that. Beautiful. The pixie dust is not worth as much as I would have liked. But it was mostly just that I wanted to get out of my system. So what does this do? Flask of Icker. Melee attacks decrease enemies' defense. It's got a 20-minute duration. So one of those is going to last you for a pretty much any boss fight. 
uh, which is great. So we don't have to worry about that for a while. So we need some iron bars next. I don't think I've got any down there. No overflow. Here we go, there's some iron. And we should need some wood as well. We should have that already taken care of. Cooking pot. We're going to literally make a kettle of fish. Pop that down right here. Do I have... Yep, I still got 20 fish in my fish station. Turn those all into the cooked variety. So there we go. Now we've got two very useful uh, items that we're going to employ the use of very soon. So everyone has told me I should also investigate the idea of the optic staff. I'm not sure what's prevented me from doing it for all this time, but I think it requires a black lens, if I remember correctly. So I think we had extra iron, so I'm going to pop that down here. We'll sort that out later. Let's investigate. What do we need for an optic staff? Is it this? Yes, it is. It is two or one black lens, two regular lenses, 12 hollowed bars, and 20 souls of sight. Now, I hope I have 20 souls of sight. I know I've got the lenses. That's no problem at all. Um, lenses are here. Boss summons, souls of night, light, fright, sight. That's the one we want. Okay, cool. So we're actually, we're all good on that. Now I just need the hallowed bars, which I should have plenty of. Okay, got a few too many there, but that's all right. And what do we craft that with? I actually forgot to look. Um, you know what? Probably more efficient to go ahead and use the black lens for that. We craft that with a mithril anvil. That makes a lot of sense. Well, as it so happens, we've got one right here. Fantastic. Optic staff get. And this summons the twins to fight for me. So now we can add this to our little growing collection of weapons in our inventory. I'm going to go ahead and alt click this to favorite it. And now we've got these guys to come hang out with us. That's kind of cool. So they'll be able to do some passive damage while I am engaged in active damage. I don't have any more iron skin potions, I don't think, either, which is a little bit sad. I should really look into making more of those. That would actually be very useful for pretty much everything, so I should have, like, a lot on hand. We can increase our max life by a bit. Why not? We'll just, uh, we'll toss a whole bunch of good things in here. Mana regen, pickup range for life hearts, teleportation, that's not super useful. I know I could flip gravity upside down, potentially, to make things also even wilder, but trying to fight a boss upside down, come on, man. You know what? Whatever, we'll do it once. You only YOLO once, you might as well take advantage. And any others? Increase knockback, night owl, thorns. I could take a thorns potion, yeah. And I think that's about it. Crate, builder, yep. Those are not useful. So I'm just going to quick stack all my money. We've got Well-Fed, we've got Flask of Vicar, we've got a variety of potions. And the only thing missing now is I was told by a lot of different people that apparently the Possessed Hatchet is the way to go for most of these boss encounters because it has homing ability. Um, so it's 116 down from the 143. It's unpleasant. It's not the best prefix that I could get, but I'm going to hope that it's good enough. I, I think it might be. Um, lastly, we need to gather up our boss summon before we actually go. I think I've got two of them on hand ready to go. There we go. So we've got a total of three there. I'll take two out of the three and use those for fishing. We've got our fishing pole, and we've got all our stuff. So good. Let us be off then. Should I go ahead and create, like, a little platformed area when I get down there? Maybe I will. We'll see. So the idea is we want to kill Duke Fishron to get the set of wings. There's also a number of pretty decent... Oh, that's handy. And she's a little laser. How cute. There's some decent spells and such that drop off of him, as well as just the prestige, of course, of knowing that we've killed a pretty difficult boss. I had some people in the comments being sort of passive-aggressive about it. It's like, yeah, this boss is so easy. And other people are like, yeah, no, this boss is pretty hard. And, well, different strokes for different folks. I haven't been flying through everything, but I think ultimately I did pretty well so far in the Let's Play. I haven't really been stuck on anything particularly long, and well, granted, it's normal mode. I think now that we've got an expert mode to contrast normal mode, it brings out some tendencies in people to be a bit more harshly critical about when things don't go perfectly. I mean, 
not that this game is inherently super difficult, but expert mode actually is pretty hard. Normal mode is like, it's okay, it's not usually super hard, but you get stuck in positions occasionally where you don't have the optimal, optimal gear, optimal gear for the situation, and uh, you can end up stuck for a couple of minutes. It's you know, not the end of the world. Keeping in mind, uh, we're looking at let's plays of between like half an hour and 40 minutes usually, or maybe 50 minutes on the long side, versus when you're playing the game kind of organically, you're not really thinking about the amount of time that's passed, and very quickly you can spend hours and hours playing the game, right? So like one or two attempts on a boss, you're gonna forget that pretty quickly when the final winning boss encounter happens and then all of a sudden you're past that point and you never really have to go back. So yeah, it's uh, it's fine, it's not a big deal, it's just that I thought I'd mention that it's a little bit easier and harder sometimes than people say. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a bunch more platforms, we've burst through a ton more of our uh, wooden supplies here. Let's, I don't want to do this, let's make a little platform up from like over here, and then we'll build off of that. It's quite handy actually to have a friend to come in and hit stuff with us, uh, or two friends in this case actually. There's that gap there. Oh, our lizard is standing in that spot, got it. Alright, and then we want to go ahead and make some platforms on top. Not sure how those got separated, but whatever. And we can just dig right back through this, we don't need to leave it here necessarily. So today was a weird day for me because I played Clue for like the first time officially. I've played it before in like an offhanded way when I was a little kid, but I've never like actually tried to take the game seriously before. And I know you're going, Clue? You mean like the board game? What's up with that? Why are you talking about a board game right now? Uh, well, we were doing the Roundtable podcast broadcast, which is the one where we play games together for a minute. And uh, we stream it on Twitch TV. And it was, uh, fine. Like, honestly, the, I mean, it's not my favorite game. I'm not a huge, massive fan of Clue. I do like some board games in general, but I don't have a lot of experience with very many of them. Uh, we've joked in the past that Bear Taffy is, like, he kind of doesn't know a lot of movie references or, like, some pop culture things kind of, like, missing there. But I'm that way with board games, for sure. Like, I know music pretty well. I know a lot about video games. But board games and card games are, like just a hole in my collective experience. I know Monopoly really well. Played a lot of Monopoly. I've played a lot of the game of life when I was a kid. I played Connect 4. I played chess. I played uh, Chinese checkers. And I played a lot of solitaire. But I don't really know poker very well. I don't really know any of that kind of stuff. I don't know... Like, I'm not good at blackjack, but at least I do understand the rules of that because it's freaking simple. Uh, but if you have to play like a pro, that's not me. But it was just, it was a weird experience, this game that, like, most little children are like, oh yeah, I know how to play Clue, no big deal. And I'm, like, a 30-year-old man, and, like, I I need you to, like, really break down the rules for me, guys. I'm not that good at this stuff. Maybe a little bit embarrassing, but also, well, it's not that big of a deal, is it? I didn't win, needless to say, but uh, I did come in a close second, because uh, math is actually almost missed his last guess, and if he missed his guess, then I guess I win by default by not guessing. I think that's how it works. We were a little bit shaky on some of the rules as well, which also makes it very entertaining to try and figure out how to play a board game. You don't know, and the person leading you might not know 100% either. Um, but it's interesting that we can even do things like this thanks to something like Tabletop Simulator. Like, I wouldn't have imagined we'd even have the option of something like that, and I think we've got a nice little jumping off point here to start the boss fight. I'm gonna just pop down a couple of rain clouds. Those might have been a little bit high, to be perfectly honest, but... Oh, no, the rain's almost reaching the ground. That's good enough. We're gonna summon the Duke, and then we're gonna pop our B. Uh, is there a way to not have this shoot off the screen? There we go. But it's just, it's incredible to me that we've got all these options now. B, there we go, for all of our buffs. And shoot him with that debuff. And then we're going to try and lead him through all of the various things. Alright, and then we're going to use the Possessed Hatchet for our homing abilities. Um, is that hitting him? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, it's just not really making like a clinking sound, so I was a little bit confused about that. I'm going to heal already, start the debuff process going. But it's just incredible to me, like, all the varieties of different life experiences that I may have not had or had differently were it not for the era that I live in. I mean, the ability to make my living off of playing video games for the internet 
to stream these things live to people who can watch and comment on what I'm doing, to be able to play board games from my potential childhood with people across the country or in other countries, as the case actually is in this case, since Northern Lion lives in Canada, uh, to be able to be in a long-term relationship with someone in another country and have it not seem like the end of the world, like, that's all pretty incredible stuff. To go from just doing this stuff to all of a sudden, like, oh, there's somebody that I care about immensely that lives in Ireland. Like, I've never been to Ireland. I, I plan to go in the next several months, and I'm quite excited about it, but I've never been. So, like, how weird is that to have a relationship with somebody in another country just based on the fact that you can talk to each other every day online? It's like, what a freaking privileged time we live in. I wonder to what degree that will continue down that road further on. Actually, this is like, this fight's going pretty well, I have to say. I'm gonna heal up again. I think maybe I should have paid more uh, credence to the possessed hatchet. I thought that the speed with which I threw it was not going to be sufficient, nor would it do enough damage comparatively. Oh god, all of a sudden things got very bad. Uh, I'm not gonna make it past the crossover. Well, I'm a little salty about that because the fight was actually fine until I found myself bordered in by the edge on the right. Oh my god. What did I waste there that I can't get back? Well, I wasted a truffle worm, two out of three of those potions. I think I popped a gravitation potion, never even used it because I forgot it was there. Yeah, I'm just like living, breathing trash, I guess. All right. I just put all the potions back away because why not? Um, we're down to eight health. I'm sure there's more debuffs I could probably have put on him. Jeez, maybe try the I the Cthulhu, get a yo-yo bag going. People have told me that's great, too. It would probably do a lot more damage a lot more quickly, so maybe that's worth trying. I'm not sure where I should slot that in. Perhaps instead of my warrior emblem? No, I would like the damage to stacks. This counts as melee. Super fast. Well, I'll lose a little defense, but maybe this would be the right way to go. Like, I'm not going to be as fast moving around, but do I need it if I'm in the air predominantly? I'm not sure. So when that hits, it'll split, turn into a bunch. It should have okay knockback, should light him on fire for a debuff. Maybe that'll be the way to go, and we'll get our optic staff and play again. I could probably reforge the optic staff as well. And really, to be honest, I could probably reforge the yo-yo bag. I mean, it's got crit strike chance on. That's not bad either. And I have been told several times critical strike is not bad uh, in general to just use. How expensive is this? Three gold? That's tolerable. Uh, minus to mana cost? That's not a super huge concern to me, considering I use it one time only. We don't really want a negative to damage. Oh, mythical. That's great. Alright, I can handle very happily some mythical. Unpleasant. Do I want to redo the possessed hatchet? This is 24. Alright, we're probably not going to do that. I guess this is... It's up there. It's not awful, though. 20 mana, 3 defense. Well, that would make up for what I replaced, though, right? I think this was... Oh, I had 4 defense on that one. Yeah, so it's, it's 1. 1 less. Tolerable. I think those are at least okay to modify it with, and we'll switch this back for the moment while we make our way back over. I think I've got the right idea with the arena, but the problem is I need to probably clear that log area that I've set up there. I don't think that's doing me any favors. Look at all the buddies I've got hanging out with me now. We've got our our pet lizard. We've got our familiar uh, skull light. We've got our three beetles. And now we've got the two twins. So we got like three, four, five, six, seven, seven creatures following us around. I'm not even a summoner. I'm just, it's the way of life that I live now. And thankfully it's becoming morning, so there is a chance that we might be able to win on this one. Really not looking forward to doing the reforges on the Unpleasant Possessed Hatchet. That could be a real pain in my butt. But yeah, if I just remembered that I had the Gravitation Potion on, I probably could have just flipped the world, gone up in the sky, and maybe it would have chased me the whole time. I wouldn't have had to worry about landing ever again. And what that means for me, I also probably could have rested in the bed right before the dungeon, which is, uh, you know, right here. That way when I respawn, then I could have come right back to where it was not requiring this big of a trip. However, 
forethought, not always the best quality of mine, and I thought maybe I needed to come home anyway for various reasons. As it turns out, not so much the case, but... Well, and this time it won't be the case either, because I've only got the one other truffle worm. Uh, the farm is coming along nicely, by the way. I know I didn't show you it on this particular episode, but it's doing okay. I went down there for about five minutes, I got two more truffle worms, and that would be a great solution for money, by the way. Oh, the king slime has awoken. I guess we're gonna fight the king slime now, because why not? Let's, uh, pour some rain on it. This should not take more than a moment or two. As you can see, it's got very low health. No freaking deal. Basically destroyed that. What did we get? We got a slimy saddle, we got a solidifier, some lesser healing potions. You can really see, uh... Strata-wise, where I should be fighting this character, we're, we're at the potions now that I can basically just disregard and throw away. Got a ninja shirt, and the slimy saddle, though, is pretty cool. This is actually a really helpful um, mount for dropping quickly. If I fly up in the air, I think it dropped a potion too. I'll grab that in a sec. Fly up in the air, turn on my turn on my mount. You'll see that I fall very, very quickly. I can also bounce on the heads of enemies. In some cases, that's quite beneficial. I'm not really sure what all of those cases might be, but if you're trying to go down the elevator, this is the fastest way to do that. Also, the slime seems to float on water because slimes do that. It's a cute mount. I like this mount in general. I think it's nice. And it's good to have in our, uh, our back pocket just in case for, you know, a rainy, slimy day. For now, though, we're going to go back to our blessed apple. And, well, you can, like, take off your mount. There we go. Surprised, actually, that when you have your mount engaged, hitting R does not switch you back to the the mount that you've just equipped, actually. I would think it would just do that dynamically. Alright, so we're going to try this one more time. If I fail on this one, then I'm going to actually have to properly strategize. The other thing is, people have to keep in mind when I'm recording these things. I know this is just like, I'm catering out of like one person's comment, but I don't know feel like I needed to say it. When I'm recording these, I don't know if I'm going to win until I do or don't. So, like, when I start this out, it's all happening on the fly. Oh, I quick stacked the... I forgot there's a truffle worm in my freaking thing. Okay, how can I do this quickly? There is no quick way, is there? I can't cheese the spawn point. All right. Then I guess we will make a cut again, and we will come back when I am at the proper location to fight the boss. That means I will grab the requisite potions again, and, uh, well, we'll do the encounter properly, so I will see you after the cut. Alright, we are back. Sorry for having to do that. Well, it only took a second, but for me it took a little bit more than a second. I've got an idea that I'm gonna try, and, well, we'll see if this actually works out. People told me to try cheesing the UFO this way, but what I can do is use my piranha gun, which I've got right here, to latch on to this boss, and essentially I can just drain its life away while I kind of float to the other side of the world. Also, I freaking favorited uh, all of the items here that I don't want to disappear. So, truffle worms will no longer be getting quick stack. That was a uh, an egregious mistake and quite silly of me, to be honest. Anyway, let's summon this boss and get a freaking move on, because we got some buffs that are, gonna, are waiting a little bit. Wait, pull it back. I want to be able to see the bobber. Thank you. And off we go. B. Look at all of these freaking buffs. Now, I should be able to flip the world. I, I had a gravitation potion in there. Flip the world. There it is. Now, we want a piranha. And just gnaw away at his butt. This could take a little while. We'll see. And go up into space for a sec. Then we can turn back around and fall back down. Really doesn't matter. We're going to heal up already. Pretty sure if I continuously fall, the only times I'm in much of any danger is when I get near the ground or when we cross. And that's about it. Other than that, I can just keep flying back and forth. I won't know when it dies, or where really it dies. Oh god, I'm into space now. I still hear it getting damaged, so we're doing okay. It's lost like one tenth, even, not even quite, of its health. So that has me a little bit skeptical about this idea working out. Because eventually we're going to actually run out of time. Uh, because Oh, okay, the fish has returned to me. Uh, hit hit it. I'm, I'm skeptical on this idea. Let's go back to Possessed Hatchet Strat. Because this one, I feel like, does pretty good damage. Also, let's get a debuff going on him. Also, can I plant upside-down clouds? Because that would just be silly. Look, I've already done as much health 
to it as I had with the other item, like, in three seconds of using the Possessed Hatchet. You can just hear the difference in its damage. What a disorienting way to fight something. But it does keep it kited very, very well, I must say. I wonder if you can use this on any boss, really. You can use this on the Moon Lord somehow? Just fly up into the sky and then his hands won't be able to... Well, I think the laser's, like, infinite range, right? Oh yeah, the time-limiting factor is going to be when our Gravitation Potion runs out, that's true. Alright, because they only brought one. So we're gonna have to hope that we can get the job done in time for that. Um, catch up a little bit, because I can't tell if I'm damaging you, please. There you are. We've got more than enough time to heal again, if necessary. We're in space, turn around. It is shooting out everywhere, we've got all kinds of little starbursts. Particle energy beams, come on, get closer with Big Red. Come on, you got this. Pop down a couple more of these. Hang around. Yep, your sharks don't really bother me. Um, I think I've lost all semblance of ability to fly right now. So we're gonna have to wrap this up pretty soon. Which is my gravitation potion? Oh, I'm running out of that in like 13 more seconds, so I'm gonna heal now. Um, please stay on the screen more. I'd like to drag you through all of this rain as, as well. Two, one, and we fall again. Is this going to become a comedy of errors? Is this what, is this what I've been reduced to? We can always get within striking distance, but we can't finish the freaking job? I hate how this is going. Alright, let's get a little bit more distance and back away. We still got 30 seconds on a heal, so... I'm feeling super optimistic about that being a possibility. I'm just gonna back away wherever it takes us. Oh no. So this is the problem when I get crossed like that. Oh no, there's a freaking wall! Oh, I got him! I'm actually kind of surprised. I didn't think I was going to make it through that one. And what did we get? We got a Tempest Staff on that. Which is Summon. Very weak knockback. Uses Sharknadoes to fight for me. I don't remember if this was a good one or not. Let's try it out real quick. Oh, so instead of, yeah, instead of our twins, we would have this little guy. It's kind of a cool looking thing to follow us around. Oh, it actually shoots the sharks out of it. So it, like... It's struggling to kill, like, a desert slime. Mm, I mean, we could reforge it. Wasn't exactly what I wanted from the drop, but at the same time, I suppose it could be worse, and we could certainly replicate the gravitation potion situation several times over. So I guess now that I know how to do it, all that's stopping me from farming this guy is, well, I need more uh, worms to summon him, and, well, I need more potions, and I need to come back. And that's about it. Cool, so that was Duke Fishron. I didn't think we would win, but we did come out victorious. Um, that... Oh, you know, the only one other thing I wanted to do is... I very quickly grabbed this item and threw it in here. I wanted to show you what the slime gun looks like, too. It's not really that big of a deal, but just in case anyone's curious, that's what it is. It's a super soaker for slime. It's a slime soaker. Does it kill things? No, not at all. I can slime this cardinal, though. I'm sorry, cardinal. You didn't do anything to deserve this, but you got slime, bro. Oh, and, well, now you got murdered, too. I didn't actually do that. Not intentionally. So, yeah, Possessed Hatchet Gravitation Potion seems to do the job, as well as all those other bonuses. Maybe we'll farm some Duke Fish Rod next time, or maybe we'll go in an entirely different direction. Anyway, it seemed to have worked out. Got it all figured out. And now we've got some forward momentum. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't find any strange plants on today's journey. Uh, so we're going to end the episode here, but I am curious to hear your feedback as always. I'm glad we finally got through that boss. And it's not like the prep was all that long or anything. I just needed to do my due diligence and get it done with all that de-alliteration. Uh, but anyway, thanks everybody for watching. I do appreciate that you're still here. If you did enjoy the episode, make sure you leave a like on it, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Have a great night, everybody.